you remain standing, let us offer a pledge to the flag of the United States of America. Attention, salute, pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. America is a wonderful land. Mm -hmm. There's no place in the world quite like it. Mm -hmm. It is the envy of all the world. America is not only a wonderful place, it's a beautiful place. The beauty can be seen on every front. And we today gather to celebrate America in a way that no one else can celebrate their country. America the beautiful, join together as we sing and sing from our heart the words of the song. <laughs>
remain standing with your Bibles open. God's Word today is from 2 Chronicles chapter 16, and we'll be reading verses 7 through 10. And I'll be sharing with you today about the eyes of the Lord are on you. This is God's Word for today, 2 Corinthians chapter 16. Verse 7, And at that time Hananiah the seer came to Asa king of Judah and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubin a huge host? with very many chariots and horsemen, yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. This is our key verse. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was wroth with the seer, and put him in prison house. For he was in a rage with him because of this thing, and Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. Father, we are thankful today that the eyes of the Lord are running forth upon the earth looking for someone in whom he might show himself to be strong. Thank you, Father, today that the invitation is still extended. The opportunity is still there for anyone and everyone who would make that commitment to follow on to know the Lord. We come to you realizing that we are blessed beyond people, beyond measure, We thank you, Father, today that you have extended your grace to us in every way, every day. Thank you, Lord, today that we can come to worship in the house, in the place of our choice. And thank you, Lord, that you have promised to meet us here in a special way. Our prayer today, above all prayers, is what it always is, that anyone who doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior will make that decision, that commitment, this hour, this very hour, and know the joy and the peace and the security that comes through a personal relationship with a loving Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do because we know the Spirit of God is working, he's moving, he's convicting, and he's converting, and he is confirming. Thank you, Lord, today that we can be a part of that celebration in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated if you would. This is a special day. It is the Lord's day, but it's unlike any other Lord's day in a sense because this is the Sunday, the weekend in the year that we come to celebrate our freedom. And as we celebrate our freedom, we come to a time of remembrance and a time of reflection. It's not all about picnics. It's not all about family gatherings. It's about taking the time to remember those who paid the price in order that we might worship and work in the place of our choice. There is no question that on this particular day, as Jimmy Fortune said in the psalm, it's more than the names on a wall. And so these are people who are in our hearts. And as I've traveled locally, I appreciate the organizations who make it their business to place flags on the grave sites of those who have served our country. And if you have the opportunity to walk through the cemetery here, you will see that of which I am speaking. 
And so on this Memorial Day, we come to celebrate God's grace and God's goodness and the blessing of living in a country where we have the freedoms that we enjoy and remembering at the same time those who paid the price and in some cases the supreme price in order that we might be here because that's not anything to be taken for granted and we would never ever think about doing that. We would not make it so cheap as to think that it's something to which we are entitled. It is a blessing, it is a gift, it is a treasure, and we are blessed to be on the receiving end of it. May you take a moment tomorrow to reflect on what this weekend, what this celebration is all about. And as you do, thank God for the privilege of living in a country that offers you what no other country in the world can possibly afford. Thank you this morning for taking time out of this holiday weekend to come and worship. I just think the two have a way of going together. Worshiping on this particular day simply reminds us, even as others are reminded, that it is an honor, it is a privilege to be able to worship in the place of our choice. So I never take your presence here for granted. I want you to know that. I thank you for being faithful, being committed, and thank you for coming this morning to worship with us as we join together. Last Sunday, I shared some information with you about a bus trip that we are planning and the date has now been set for Tuesday, August the 13th. And because of a generous donation, it will not cost you anything to ride the bus. Somebody has covered that expense and we are so grateful for it. There is a sign-up sheet on the counter by the kitchen. If you would be so kind as to sign that today, obviously we have time and uh, we'll let you know as plans become more firm about time and details uh, that need to be addressed, such as what are we going to do about lunch? We'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. Don't you worry. We Baptists know how to eat. Uh, we're not going. And so we are just uh, looking forward to the privilege, and it is a privilege, to support Cindy's family in the memorial service for her mom and dad. This is what we do. This is our opportunity to show our love and our commitment and our support. I just ask you to do everything you can to be a part of that particular event. And again, we'll let you know as things become more firm. As we come to this service, we are always honored that the Sanctuary Choir selects songs that reinforce our reason for being here and our privilege of living in the United States of America. We ask our worship leaders to come and lead the Sanctuary Choir as they share this message in song in their honor. Valley Forge and Bunker Hill, Concord and Lexington, Gettysburg, Shiloh, Omaha Beach, and the Midway Islands, the jungles of Southeast Asia, and the desert sands of the Middle East. The mere mention of these battlefields reminds us that there has been those for whom defending freedom's dream has required of them great sacrifice, even the loss of their very lives. And so, 
we honor their devotion. We thankfully acknowledge the price they have paid. We now salute these, our fallen heroes. of plain white crosses, the names carved on a wall, the ones who daily struggle with battles they recall. Stir us to remember the price of liberty. Show
Thank you, Sanctuary Choir. Join me in a moment of silence in their honor. my travels in recent days and weeks, I have noticed at least three different locations where there were signs all making the same appeal, looking for volunteers. It's interesting because there are organizations that depend on volunteers. The difference is the church is not an organization. The church is an organism. The church is a living body and Jesus Christ is the head of that body. And still the Lord is looking for volunteers. When you read the scripture that I shared this morning, it was a matter of King Asa doing what he should not have done, what others had done before him. He depended on an alliance with ungodly kings to fight his battles, to win his battles. And he failed to recognize that one man plus God is a majority. And when a country puts their trust in man, they get what man can give. When they put their trust in God, they get what God can give. And the Lord, by his own definition, used unconventional methods to fight battles and to win battles on behalf of his people, not the least of which was the use of hornets. And I can tell you, that will usually get things on your side. When you look at the scripture, it, don't misread it because the scripture is very clear. The eyes of the Lord are moving back and forth, up and down the earth, not looking for strong men, but looking for men in whom he might show himself to be strong. The Marines had an com- advertisement a few years ago, and maybe they still do, that the Marines are looking for a few good men. The Lord isn't necessarily looking for a few good men. He's looking for men who would commit themselves to him, and he'll take care of the good part. Needless to say, everybody that the Lord called and used weren't really good people but they served a great God, they served a good God. And so when you look at the scripture today, you understand that when the Lord begins to mobilize his army, the focus isn't altogether on who he chooses, who he enlists, it's on those that he rejects, the ones that he does not use. Right about the time I got out of high school, I guess, and I've said this to you, that one regret that I have, probably above all others, is that I didn't serve in the military. I would love to go back and do that. That wasn't God's plan for me, and I don't guess it is now. I don't know if it's too late for me to enlist or not. Anybody want an 80-year-old soldier? And, but I did go with a busload to Richmond, Uh, for a physical exam and on the way back somebody told the driver congratulations you just brought back a whole load of rejects well that wasn't really true all of them did not fail the test I did pass the test but nonetheless first of all when we want to find out who's going to be in service for the Lord you've got to find out, first of all, who's not going to be there. Ben Matlock said, you don't pick a jury. 
you kick off what you don't want and what's left is the jury. And so when it comes to choosing those that are going to serve the Lord, first of all, you've got to eliminate those that he cannot use. So with that in mind, first of all, I want to tell you, he cannot use Demas. Demas was one that the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, and he said this, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. So right off the bat, right out of the gate, Demas is disqualified. You can put him over to the side, put him over there. He's not going to be any good whatsoever to the Lord. He is the one who he said would be, uh, who loved this present world. Vance Havener was a, I guess he called Christian humorist. He had a way of giving one-liners. And he said, how are you going to convince somebody to join the Lord's army when half of the army has already gone AWOL? It's interesting because what the Lord is looking is for people who would be committed. I want to offer an illustration to you, and you just have to join with me, use your imagination, and fill in the blanks if there are any. This week, you're going to start a business, and you're going to need and get about 50 people to work that business. So you're going to need 50 employees. So you get your business up and running, you get the employees that you need, and this week you're going to start. So all of the 50 prospective employees are there ready to go. They're ready to go. And they're asking you as the leader, as the supervisor, as the business owner, when do we come? When, what do we, our hours, when do we show up? And the business owner says, well, don't worry about that. We don't have any schedule. We're just going to go with whoever shows up. What? How long do you think a business is going to operate? How long do you think a business is going to stay in business if you depend on who, let's see, who shows up? Why do we think the church is any different? There is no, there is no doubt the church is the body of Christ because otherwise the church would not survive if we're going to operate the church on let's just see who shows up. Demas is disqualified. He's out, he's out of here. You cannot use him because he loves this present world. As a matter of fact, Paul wrote to again to Timothy and he said in chapter 2 and verse 4 that a good soldier does not become entangled with the affairs of this world. But he rather focuses on doing what is right, doing what is legal, doing what is necessary in order that he might please the one whom he has called. The man who is in the military has but one primary responsibility and obligation, and that is to obey and to satisfy your commanding officer. And our commanding officer is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. We are in his service. We are, and by the way, just so you know, we're in war. We're in a battle. This is not a playground. This is a war area. We're in a battle. Satan is declaring war on the people and the church of the living Lord. And so the Lord wants you to understand our focus has to be on doing what the Lord has called us to do. It was said that years ago, some man lost several fingers in a working accident. And the word around town was that ever since that time, he was shorthanded. And so it is true that many times the church is shorthanded. Make no mistake about it, the church cannot function if we operate on the principle, let's just see who shows up on any given Sunday. We've got a commitment. We've got to honor our commander in chief. 
We've got to honor the one who has called us and placed us into his service. So Demas is off to the side. The next one who is disqualified is Diotrephes. You'll read about him in 3 John, verse 9. For the scripture says, Diotrephes love to have the preeminence. And that's not going to work. Because the apostle Paul said, concerning our Lord Jesus Christ, in all things, he might have the preeminence. And so, Diotrephes wanted to be number one. He was the poster boy for my way or the highway. And that will not work in the church of the living Lord. It is the Lord's way or it is no way. It is not my way or no way. Diotrephes has been disqualified. He absolutely is not going to work. And by the way, not only so, but the, John had another charge against him. We mentioned it a few weeks ago, did we not? He wasn't doing the one thing that could mean life and death, the difference between life and death to the people of that time in that area. He failed to show hospitality. And John said, when I get there, I'll take care of him. Make no mistake about it. Anybody who operates on the basis of my way or the highway is out of here. You cannot serve the Lord. He cannot use you. He has to have the preeminence. In all things, he might have the preeminence. Not only so, but we've gotten rid. I don't like to use that word, but we got rid of Demas. We just set him off to the side. And we have set Diotrephes off to the side. They're disqualified. And so, not only so, but we cannot use in the Lord's army, in the Lord's service, we cannot use the distracted. You will read about this in Judges chapter 6 and verse, chapter 7 and verse 6. I love this story. Boy, this is a precious story. They're trying to figure out how many people are we going to have? How many people are we eventually going to have to fight this battle? And I get this. I read that story, and it sounds like a fiction movie or something. First of all, they've got 32,000 men. 32,000 men. And they say, anybody who doesn't want to fight, get over here. Get over here. And... They wind up with 10,000 people to fight that battle. Which, by the way, 32,000 people, 32,000 men, they would still have been shorthanded. They would have. That would not have been enough. Now you've eliminated 22,000 of them. You've got 10,000 left. And so, still too many. We've got to thin this crowd out. And this is what they said to do. Go down to the river. Go down to the water. And everybody who gets down on all four and drinks the water from the creek, you put them over to one side. And anybody who gets down and cups the water in their hands and brings it to their mouth to drink it, you put them on the other side. You know how many they wound up with? They started out with 10,000. They wound up with 300. They had 300 men who cupped the water in their hands. What was the difference? What was the message? What's going on here? Simply this. If you're going to be in battle, you've got to watch and war at the same time. You've got to stay alert. You can't stick your head down in the creek. You've heard me say this, no doubt. I'm kind of partial to Western, partly because I can watch a Western channel not worried about commercial. But the other reason is, I know this from watching the Western. Anytime a man gets down on all fours and drinks water from a creek, a lot of things are going to happen, and all of them are bad. You just might as well mark it up. That's just the way it's going to happen. And so the Lord wound up with 300 men out of 32,000 who were qualified to fight the battle. You cannot have people who are distracted. 
You cannot have people who are not watching and warring at the same time. Nehemiah was a man who was as committed as anybody you want to find out. Oh, they tried so many times. They tried so many. Did they ever try to distract him from the work of rebuilding the wall? And they told him, I've said this to you more recently, they told him, come on out to the plain of Ono and meet with us. And Nehemiah said, oh no. That's it. That was his answer. And so you've got to be on alert. No man who wars can entangle himself. He can't be distracted with the things of this world. Not only so, the Lord cannot use people of distraction. He cannot use people of delay. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, he said, one man told him, Lord, I'll follow you, but let me first go and bury my father. You know what was interesting about that? There's no indication that the man's father had even died. He, that was just, he was just stalling for time. He was, that was just his way. That was a selfish, personal way of saying, no, I'm not going to do it. And the Lord said to him, you let the dead bury the dead, but you come and me and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then another one said to him, I will go, but first let me go and bid them farewell at my home. Another one who was making just a delay tactic, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said to him, nobody who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. You do know about the trio, do you not? You remember about the trio who used, I don't even know if they had, were delay tactics. They were just denying the opportunity. The one who said, I will follow you. I can't follow you now but because I bought a piece of lamb and I've got to go see it. Let me ask you, did that man think that lamb was going to fly up, fly away? Did he think it was going to take wings and be gone? Another one said, I've got to go and I bought a team of oxen and I've got to go and prove that team of oxen. Let me get this straight. You bought a team of oxen and you don't know whether they've got three legs or four. You bought them sight unseen. That was very poor business. You wouldn't do that. And the third one said, I would follow you, but I've married a wife. Somebody said he may have been the only one, one of the bunch. But the Lord made it clear. Those three were not going to be invited to his supper. And by the way, as far as we know, the supper was a meal of celebration because somebody had given their heart to the Lord and they were invited to come and be a part of it. But what I want you to know is simply this. There are people today that the Lord cannot use, but thank God there are people he can use. So let's focus on the positive. Let's focus on the people who are going to be in the Lord's army. Let's see if you fit this group. I love the people who are dedicated. If you want to be in the Lord's army, if you want to be in the Lord's service, you've got to be dedicated. In Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 through 18, you read more about it in the other parts of the chapter, but the three Hebrew children have been told that they are supposed to bow down and worship the image of Nebuchadnezzar. And they just politely say, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do it. We're not going to bow down to an idol. We're just not going to do that. We're not going to bow down to a statue of a heathen king. And so they're kind of given an opportunity and said, you know, if you don't do this, we're going to throw you in the fire furnace. You're going to be barbecued. Uh, you go, make no mistake about it. We'll change your mind. And this is what they said. Our God is able to deliver us. And our God will deliver us. But this is what I like. This is what I love. And this is what the Lord is looking for. 
even if he doesn't kind of people. But they said, even if he doesn't, we still don't have any attention about down to worship you. And you know the story. Nebuchadnezzar really got riled. Oh, did he get angry. Crank that furnace up seven times hotter than it usually is. Throw them in there. And they come out. The amazing thing is, the smell of smoke is not even on their clothes. I want to tell you what. God is looking. The eyes of the Lord are going to and fro up and down the earth looking for somebody who is an even if he doesn't kind of believer. That you will put your faith in God and you'll trust him and believe that he's going to bring you out, he's going to bring you through no matter what. The scripture is very clear. Not only so, but he can use the disqualified. The pastor, how can he use the disqualified? Only because the people that he calls think they're disqualified. I want you to understand God deliberately bypasses the number one draft choice. He just does. God uses those who think they're not qualified. God qualifies those whom he has called. He does not call the qualified. He will qualify the call. Let's start with Moses who said, God, you made a mistake. I can't do it. I'm not a speech maker. I can't talk in front of people. And certainly not in, talk in front of Pharaoh. And God said, don't worry about it. You are talking to the professional tongue maker around here. And then Nehemiah said, Lord, you made a mistake. you got to bypass me. I can't do what you're asking me to do because I'm too young. And the Lord said, Jeremiah, I want you to know, before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, I had my plan for you. I had my eye on you. I had it all laid out, what you were going to do for me. And the one I really love is Gideon. When Gideon got his call, he said, Lord, you must have made a mistake. You don't really want me. Listen, Lord, I'm the last one in the last house in the last tribe. You can't get much further back down the line than that. But God called these three, God qualified all three of these men, men who thought they were disqualified. I want an even if he doesn't kind of person. God is looking for a person who will dare to say, if I perish, I perish. Right from the mouth of Esther. Make no mistake about it. Because in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he said, Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. I want you to know this. Serving the Lord is not always going to be easy. There are going to be some difficult times. There are going to be some times when you will think, I don't know about this. Perhaps you heard me say this. And I don't know that I'm really proud of it, but it's fact. And I can just be honest with you. In the time that I have been here, there probably have been six times that I thought, I'm going somewhere else. Not to another church. I'm going to, do another, I'm going to look for another job. And I can tell you this. It was like the prophet said, just when I got ready to quit, the fire of God burns in your heart and you cannot quit it's all in the call and i'm telling you if god hasn't called you no matter what no matter where you are no matter what your field of service if god hasn't called you you won't last it's all in the call because god will not call quit, let you quit he called you and he'll keep you and so i've come to learn what I should have already known. I told somebody that I really thought when I went into the ministry that everybody was going to love me. And on the second day, I found out that wasn't the case. And they said, I'm surprised it took you that long to figure it out. And so I just want you to know that 
There have been some through the years who aren't exactly throwing flowers my way. I can tell you that. But make no mistake about it. The eyes of the Lord are going to and fro up and down the earth looking for a man in whom he might show himself to be strong. And just so you know, the Lord is looking for volunteers. He's looking for somebody who will willingly give themselves to whatever field of service God has planned for them. And if you'll do that, I can tell you, you won't make the mistake that Asa made of going out and siding up with a heathen king to fight your battle for you. You'll learn to trust the Lord. You'll learn to believe him. You'll learn that the battle belongs to the Lord. The victory is his. He will give you the victory. God, the scripture says, causes us to triumph in everything. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. We don't just barely get by. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But it all starts, it all starts, and it may very well be right here this morning, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro up and down these pews looking for somebody in whom he might show himself to be strong. I pray that you're not a Demas. I pray that you're not a Diotrephes. I pray that you're not a distracted. I pray that you are devoted, that you are dedicated, and you are determined. You are going to be all God enables you to be. Not all you can be, but all God enables you to be. It is a blessing. It is a privilege. It is a treasure. It is a joy. It is an honor to serve the Lord. It is no sacrifice to serve the Lord. I want you to understand we are here today and we are honoring the lives of those who, the memory of those who, in many cases, sacrificed their life. They gave their life. And the Lord is simply asking you today to make a commitment to him. Sign up for warfare because we are in a war. Make no mistake about it. And you don't have to look that far or that long to know what I'm talking about. We're in a war. Make no mistake about it. I want to ask you this morning, anybody care to sign up? The eyes of the Lord run to and fro up and down the earth looking for someone in whom he might show himself to be strong. He's not looking for strong men. He's not looking for strong women. He's looking for people who will be a chosen vessel. You can be a broken vessel. You can be a chosen vessel. The only thing he will not use is a dirty vessel. And if that is necessary, he'll clean that up, by the way. I ask you this morning as we prepare for this invitation time, our worship leaders will come together. And the words of this song, I just think say it all. It says it all. Jesus is Lord of all. The invitation is this. Perhaps you've heard me say this in the past, but it comes down to this. He asked the question, Jesus asked the question, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you won't do what I ask you? It is simply a matter of Jesus is Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all. It's just that way. We cannot pick and choose what part of our life he's going to have any involvement and any authority over, any use of. We can't do that. We give our bodies, we present ourselves as a living sacrifice. That's what the apostle said. There are people who say, and I've heard this a few times in my years of ministry, I'd be willing to die for the Lord. I don't say I don't believe him, but I can't say I do believe him either. But I know this, 
The Lord isn't asking you to die for him. He's asking you to live for him. That's what he wants. He just wants us to live for him. And we have to let him know, Lord, here am I. Send me. The eyes of the Lord right now are scanning this congregation and beyond, but scanning this congregation looking for a person in whom he might show himself to be strong. I just ask you, are you the person on whom he has his eyes this morning? Would you stand? Would you join? Would you sing? Would you listen? a closing prayer, I just want to bring a couple of uh, prayer matters to your attention. Sometimes we pray for people and we don't really know, you know, what the end result was, what happens down the road, uh, but I do know about uh, two that for which we're thankful, and one of them is Susan Myers, who told me last Sunday she was a year, she's been cancer free, and so we thank God for that. And for the last several Sundays, Donna Shrum has been back, and we just thank the Lord. And Donna will slip out early uh, to avoid uh, contact, and we're okay with that. I'm okay with that, but I did tell her, if you leave in the middle of the sermon, we're going to have to have a talk. <laughs> and so, but there are, uh, we, we just see prayers answered, and this is a praying church. This is, these are praying people. And we have a responsibility to pray one for another. And God honors that. And so I just want you to know that uh, your prayers are not in vain. They are not. Prayers are answered. 
And we always say, I love it when an answer to prayer walks through the door. Mm -hmm. And that sort of is the case. Father, thank you today for reminding us that God honors prayer. We know that our prayers must always conclude with the words, thy will be done. We don't always know what that may be, but God does. And we are content to put our prayers in the hands of the Lord, who sees eternity from eternity to eternity, who has the power, who has the presence, uh, who has the purpose to do whatever he knows is for the eternal welfare of those for whom we pray. Thank you, Lord, today. What a blessing, what a joy, what an honor to see the answer to prayers. It just encourages us and reminds us to keep on keeping on and to keep on praying because God honors prayer. God hears prayer and he answers prayers. Thank you, Lord, today. We thank you, we love you in Jesus' loving, saving, and holy name. Amen. God's people said, God bless America. God bless America. Amen. Amen. Amen.